Okay, welcome to another work solution, this time for a mechanics moment que uh, momentum question sorry, uh, from the AQA A-Level Physics uh, specification. Pause the video and read the question if you haven't already. Okay, now, step one on the calculation, we're told a car of mass 970 kilograms moving at 15 meters per second. It's moving on a level road, so the road is flat. It performs an emergency stop. We've got a constant braking force acting on the car. Uh, it says assume that the braking force is the resultant force, so no other forces are acting because this is the resultant force, so it doesn't get larger or smaller, it stays the same. Okay, calculate the change in momentum of the car during the emergency stop. So, quite straightforward. It's going to be mass times the change in velocity. The mass is 970. The change in velocity was from 15 to 0, so it's actually minus 15 meters per second. That's a 5. Um, and calculating this gives us a value of minus 14550. Okay, so part one, very easy, and that's why it's only worth one mark. Calculate the distance the car moves to come to a halt during the emergency stop. Okay, now this is worth four marks, and to me, the simplest way of solving this one is to simply think of this in terms of energy. The question wants us to talk about it in terms of momentum, but you can't really be uh, find marks for doing something which is correct. So, since I think this is the easiest way of doing it, I'm going to do it in terms of energy, but I'll show you how to do it in terms of momentum. So, in terms of energy, if you know the kinetic energy, the half mv squared of the car before, right, the brakes have to do work in stopping, in converting that kinetic energy into heat. Okay, so the brakes are doing work on the car to convert that kinetic energy into heat, and work is force times distance. Right, so if I want to find the distance travelled and the force was constant, I can just divide both sides by F, cancels the F on this side, so half mv squared divided by F will give me the distance travelled. So that becomes a half of the mass 970 times 15 squared, which is the uh, velocity, divided by the force, which I'm given here is 6.1 times 10 to the 3 newtons. Okay, and when I calculate this, I get a value of 17.889 something something something, which I'll round to 17.9 meters, which is correct. Um, since the question is talking about momentum, we can look at it in terms of momentum as well. So the equation F equals MA, which is Newton's second law, could also be seen as F equals M, acceleration is change in velocity over time, change in velocity over time, so it could be thought of as MV over T. Uh, we've been given the force, we've got uh, the change in momentum, and we could find the time, so rearrange for time. So that gets us time is equal to M change in velocity over force. So we could go ahead and calculate the time and then use the calculated time in uh, one of the SUVAT equations, S equals a half U plus V T, okay, to calculate the distance. And we get exactly the same value. So either way is fine, but um, yeah, it's just interesting to see that you can do it both ways. Right, the car is now loaded with passengers and luggage and again travels at 15 meters per second. State and explain how this affects the braking distance of the car. Assume the, the car experiences the same braking force as in part A. Now it says state and explain. Now it depends on what year you, you do your exam because some years momentum is taught in the first year. Sometimes some boards teach it in the second year available. So questions like this do come up. As long as your physics is accurate, you should be able to get all the marks because you can get retakers who understand momentum, etc. So we could talk about this in terms of energy. If I talk about it in terms of energy, I would answer the question in terms of, since the car has a greater mass and it's going at the same velocity, it will have a greater kinetic energy. Therefore, more work will need to be done since the force remains constant. Um, that work will have to be performed over a greater distance. The braking distance will increase. Right. So that pretty much explains it in terms of energy. So the way I answered this bit, but if I wanted to explain it in terms of momentum, I could say a greater change in momentum would be required to stop the car due to its greater mass. This would end up increasing the stopping distance since T equals MV over F, which is this. And um, F stays constant, so T must increase, right? So if that stays the same size, this is uh, larger, right? The value on top is larger. If this value is larger, then and this stays the same size, this has to get bigger. If T gets larger, then since 
displacement equals a half u plus v times t, s or distance would also increase. So both, both methods explain the same thing. Okay, I hope you found this useful. Please comment, like, and share. Thanks for watching.